finally we can get someone around here who knows their <laughs> basketball as opposed to this assortment of insiders and front office people and just gas bags in general. What are you talking about? Uh, Doris Burke with us. Uh, thrilled to see her. Uh, loves her basketball. I believe she loves basketball more than me. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Does Doric, Doris Burke uh, love basketball more than Amin El Hassan? But not Tony. Uh, <laughs> Nobody can love basketball more than me. Okay, maybe not. Tony. Hoopers, no. uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, Doris, thank you for being on with us. And I'm I'm watching something that I'm trying to uh, make historical sense of because I think I can say Jokic is the best basketball player ever. I, I feel like I'm, I mean he could keep. Did you winning. see Michael Jordan? I know, but I I'm mean, just saying he could keep winning MVPs here. Thank you, Stugatz. I you're appreciate welcome. you yeah. for always being there in that regard. Very controversial opinion from you, <laughs> but um, seriously, uh, Doris, can you help me understand? Because I've never seen someone who plays basketball this way who can dominate a game easily, slowly. Yes, you know what, Dan. Um, it's been a privilege for me, obviously, to cover LeBron's career, KD's career. Uh, I came in at the very tail end of Kobe's successful years. Um, this guy is unique in his ability. I call him the chess master because he's solving every defense in real time. He seems to see and feel it in a way um, that's really special. And what I love, we had a game earlier this year, and I think our sideline reporter in the game was Roz. And uh, he had set some record, and forgive me, I don't remember what it was, but it was a passing record, an assist record. And you know this guy, he deflects attention away from himself. He's quite uncomfortable anytime you're asking him about his individual success. But on that particular night, he had set an assist record. And I think the way Roz phrased it was something about, are you proud? What are you most proud of? And he said, well, he said, I guess I'm proud that maybe this record means that I've helped my teammates. He's such a likable guy, and what I fail to understand and what frustrates me wildly is what I feel like can be disrespect toward him and my people underestimating him. We sat with Gabe Vincent yesterday and then Aaron Gordon, and Gabe said something really intriguing. He said he's a better athlete than you think because there's going to be a moment where you're – and KD said something similar um, about uh, Luca as it relates to this. And, and what Gabe said to us yesterday was something like, he's a better athlete than you think. He's going to pretend he's lumbering up the floor and then he's going to hit you with a burst and he's passed you or he's made you look silly with something he's done. Uh, and then Aaron Gordon talked about the relentless nature of this guy, the, the commitment to conditioning that he made. He's tireless. I, what did he play the other night? 40, mm -hmm. whatever, 43 minutes, almost 44 minutes. Um, he doesn't fatigue anymore. And uh, he's just, I don't know, there's something so likable about the man. He wears his wedding ring tied around his shoe. He's so humble. He cares, could care less about the NBA lifestyle. This guy is one of my absolute favorite people and one of my absolute favorite players to watch. And I, I just, PJ Carlesimo, Kesty, and I keep saying, guys, we just keep saying we are so thankful that, you know, at this moment where 11 million people are tuning in, that maybe people can start to appreciate him because shame on us. Shame on us as a fan base in this country if we don't respect and appreciate what this man is doing. Doris, uh, I was talking to someone yesterday at Media Availability and I said, the, all the great players, they're, they usually play largely mistake-free basketball. But then there comes yeah. a time where... They make mistakes, but because of their greatness, whether it's athleticism, whether it's just sheer, sheer skill, they make the play anyway, even though they made mistakes. I yeah. watch Jokic, and I, he doesn't make mistakes. He, he doesn't. We never get to that point where his talent needs to take over because he gets it right every single time. How do you make him play mistake basketball? How, how did the Miami Heat get him to falter a little? You know, I don't know that that's the solution to beating this team, to be perfectly <laughs> frank with you. I mean, I, I just don't think you're going to force him. You're never going to speed him up. His mind works so quickly. There's a subtle thing that happens in basketball often where, you know, as a, def as a you know, defensive team, and look at what Spo has done in controlling tempo and keeping teams off balance as they've marched through this playoffs. You know, in game seven, I believe, of Boston, I don't think he played the zone until like the second half of the fourth quarter. So I think it was six minutes and down. He didn't play it until a, a particular moment. Like his 
his pulling of the strings is so timely, Eric Spolstra. And, but, but this guy, again, I go back to that word chess master where the pawns or the rooks or whatever's moving on the floor and he's feeling it. He's feeling it in this nuanced way um, that maybe you can't quantify. So what did they do? Um, you know, you try to affect Jamal Murray in game two. So then what does Michael Malone do? He counters with the most on-ball screens. And, I mean, you know this. That one action of dribble handoff, that's very hard to disrupt. Mm -hmm. You saw them blitz Jamal a little bit more, and they picked, their pickup points were different for Jamal. Then Jamal uses that escape dribble. And I still think there's more to be mined if they continue to trap Jamal, particularly with, with Jokic on the floor. Now he's going to escape dribble. I think if he gets off it faster and the release points are there more quickly, then all of a sudden it's a three on two with Jokic with the ball in his hands. And that's problematic. But I know this. So you guys remember in, in, in the game in last year's finals at Boston, I think it's four and it's a must win situation. And the intensity coming off Steve Kerr and, and Stephen Kerr, I was like, these badass MFs are not walking out of here without a win. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and and game, two, excuse me, game $5. two $5. in 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 Den uh, Denver, Eric Spolstra, Chris Quinn, Karan Butler, the entire staff. There's this, there's just this intensity pouring off of these guys, and that matters. And that matters. And then that, you know, fuels the team. So my expectation tonight is you're going to see all that incredible, fabulous, nasty, competitive spirit from Miami. And I'll be shocked if this isn't a possession ball game down the stretch. And we've seen Miami um, flourish in those environments. So I can't, I just can't wait for tip. Doris, I am asking you this because you're a Hall of Famer. So if your answer is no, it's no, okay? But I'm asking your permission. Well, wait a minute. If her answer is no, it's no, yes. That's I, I, will, I will honor the answer, you're, you're and I will fake my way through you're it. Gonna, okay? You're going to say that she gets to be the can arbiter. Can we say, Scott, that should always be the case when you're talking to a woman if my answer is no, it's no. <laughs> well, you're right. You are right. But I'm asking permission here. Can I respect what it is Jokic is doing on the floor and still find it to be boring? Oh no! Oh gosh! Uh, I I I I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I do believe it's happening. Some though, you're saying how nice he is and how likable yeah. and everything else, and I think um, him struggling through his second language. I mentioned that if he were American, right, and interested yeah. in stardom, he would somebody yeah. he'd be somebody who'd have all the stardom because he, he yeah. is a seven foot unicorn like it's not yeah. it's not very often Doris I, I I see it in your face when you're talking about him you're like my god I respect the science of what this is <laughs> what it, what is happening here so much because no yeah. one gets to break the game over their knee like that it's crazy uh, let me ask you this was it Pete Sampras uh guys who had you know that great tennis career and yet people did not appreciate him mm -hmm. because his personality was um you know understated give me some agassi yeah I don't know. some agassi. yeah it yeah. was an agassi great point with the hair early and then dating steffi graf and listen we we are in an entertainment medium right like this is part of sports it's an entertainment medium we were talking about this last night at dinner um with pj and kessie about you know the the women's final four became compelling basketball because angel reese and uh and caitlin clark were these compelling figures in basketball. And for three weeks, those two players dominated the basketball narrative. Now the playoffs hadn't started and I understand, but I remember going to the women's final four for the first time as a fan and saying, wow, you guys have maybe the most captivating players in the sport right at the moment, regardless of N uh, NBA mm -hmm. college. Cause at the moment, those women were so compelling. And so you lose a little bit of that with Jokic because all he wants to do is be with his daughter and his wife and, I, you know, I begged him to do, I said, listen, I want to do a film session with you. I'm going to put you in a chokehold like your brothers until you tap out and say yes. And he just looked at me and he's like, Doris, 
I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, put it on the poll, Juju at Lebetard Show. Would Jokic be a bigger star if he had a mullet? Uh, I think Federer is from the same class of of yeah. personality type, where the excellence should be enough, but for some reason uh, we need a yeah. little pizzazz on it. Uh, I mean, you were talking about something non basketball yeah. related. Uh, before the show, I'd like you to present that question to Doris that you were asking me before the show. Doris, have you ever used your cell phone in your dreams? Have I ever used my cell phone in my dreams? I don't believe so. What do you think's happening I, there? I, mean? I, I submit to you that no one actually dreams about using their phone, even though it's something that we're now we are all kind of addicted to. No one dreams about using the cell phone, even though Juju Gotti is. Is saying, is I have he... nightmares about me using my damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to you, Doris. I have nightmares. nightmares that I'm writing in a Google Doc and it's the wrong thing, but these feel similar. What are What is a worse excuse, Doris? Is it uh, my dishwasher was broken or my aunt is sick? <laughs> uh, dishwasher broken. <laughs> wow. you're, you're Thank on, you, Doris. You're, on, you're, you're on a heater, you're Charlotte. You're validating me. Um, uh, Doris, how about help me with this part of it, right? Because I know Bam and Jimmy can help make each other better, but I don't think that they can make each other better the way Jokic makes Jamal Murray better. No slight on Murray. No, uh, yeah. me, no that is no slight on Murray. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I think it's two different tandems. And what I, I saw an interesting uh, number yesterday about Jimmy. So from the point he hurts his ankle in game one against the Knicks, in 12 or 14 games, he's been under 50% shooting. And what's happening, he's, he's got the most drives, um, Dan, in, in the playoffs. And that's when he's at his most dangerous <clears throat> because he jump stops and he either scores over somebody and he can score over size and he can finish when he's right. And um, But what they have done is he's, they've met him in the paint with size. They forced him to be a passer. The game three, the team went 0 for 7, I think, off his first seven passes. And these were good looks. I mean, like these were <clears throat> not necessarily wide open where you have got five feet. Um, I just don't think like Miami is averaging 99 points. In the four final games of the Eastern Conference Finals, I think they went 93, 94, 103, 103. I just remember thinking to myself, <clears throat> those numbers won't beat Denver. Like, Denver is so good offensively. I think the threshold is, like, between 108 and 112, an absolute minimum you've got to get to. What they score in game one, I don't even remember, 111? Well, I, I don't know, whatever. I just think they've got to score more points. And unless they use the great equalizer, the three – to greater effect like they did in game two, um, which was such, I think they scored 51 points from three. Unless they do that, I think they're going to have a hard time winning this series. Uh, Doris, we're going to see you when you come back here. You owe us $25 for clearing <laughs> your voice into the microphone. But Stugatz <laughs> wants to, that's okay. No, it's all right. It's just a yeah. fining system we have 25 around 25 bucks, we but, trust you. But Stugatz I'll front has, it to you Stugatz if you need has to. a question for you here to close us out. A three-pointer for your life, Doris. A little game I like to call three-pointer for your life. You have two choices, okay? J.J. Reddick and Larry Bird. <laughs> they have to make the shots, okay, for she you to stay alive. That's how that would she work. I just want to make sure Doris is clear, okay? She, she understands. Is, she you don't have to don't preface it anymore. I have my answer. Sorry, okay. Bird. Thank you. You're uh, alive. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. You lived, uh, Doris. Uh, good seeing you. Thank Doris. you for being on. Doris. 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 Hey, Doris. I have the wheel of issues here in front of me, Stugatz, and it is stacked. We have Zion and porn stars. Mm -hmm. We have uh, celebrity dating mm -hmm. that includes uh, Shakira rumors. Okay. We have, uh, this is also a separate category, it just says up there the milkshake lady, which is what I called the, uh, the woman who is dating uh, Bill Murray the now. The woman who is dating Bill Murray. Wow. Put some respect on her name. Uh, it is my fault. I don't know the, who the milkshake lady is. I know her song. I know that it brings the boys to the yard. <laughs> I don't know uh, very much else about her. We well, have Billy's... Brings, brings Bill Murray to the yard, Dan. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Billy's a hockey analysis mm -hmm. is also Mine? on the wheel. Yes, yeah. uh, yours, Billy. Uh, because Today's not about me, Dan. 
You're angling to replace Roy on that trip oh, to no. Vegas. No, no, no. no he, he's it not didn't land on shit, Billy. Man. We haven't spun the wheel yet. So that's I'm, true. Uh, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. But uh, we've got Buck Showalter blaming that damn World Baseball Classic for all the Mets losing. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said he was proud of how they just got swept. Uh, we've got uh, Mike Breen is coming up later in the show. He's also on the wheel. If you're watching on television, that's coming up uh, later on the show. And also, Amin wants to correct me on something. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what it is. that. It, oh, and New York smoke is up there as oh well. The smoke in New York from uh, all of Quebec is on fire. Mm -hmm. Amin, what does it say up there? I can't see it from here. I believe it says stat of the day, Dan. That wasn't one of the choices, huh. but go ahead and play the stat of the day music. I did not give stat of the day as one of the choices. It's up there. It's in fine print. Uh, I have the it's, choices it's, written down uh, here. Uh, I mean, I wrote them down for no reason. Well, I thought you were going to What are the choices me. again? Yeah. What it's are a the, real wheel. I mean, sees it. What are the choices? Zion and porn stars, celebrity dating, milkshake lady, Billy's hockey analysis, Buck Showalter, Mike Breen, and Amin wants to correct Dan and New York Smoke. Uh, Mike Breen, only if you're watching on television, not if you're uh, doing audio. But stat of the day it is, so go ahead and play the music. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. My blood alcohol content is 0.999. You sound like like I, your your energy stinks. My like energy's you, amazing. I'm, well, amazing. It doesn't sound not like really. It, yeah. it, does, it okay. sounds awful. It but, doesn't yeah. sound to anyone yeah. like your energy is amazing. No. All right. So I'll give you a different stat then. Stat of the day. So <laughs> every NBA Finals since I left the Phoenix Suns in 2012 has featured at least one person I worked with. And of those, uh, I guess that's 11 NBA Finals that have happened, someone I've worked with has won the championship nine times. The stat of the day is about you and it wasn't even you, on the wheel? you goddamn right. All right, go sit in the penalty box for well, two minutes. I wanted, to hear, Jesus. I wanted to hear Billy's hockey analysis. Though. Okay, well, well, maybe we'll spin <laughs> the wheel again that, and though. see if we get to that hockey analysis. You could leave now and listen to it in the penalty box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so regret, I so regret asking you. That question. I and wrote him down. I do. I do too. I don't know why you threw and, it to and me. And I've regret. I, I now regret paying you. Uh, wow. You, you're, I mean, his week is his week. He's just been drinking and spending money on liquor and throwing parties. Sounds like a great week. And inviting people to the studios. You're not paying Boris dividends. There, Boris Johnson's here. I mean. Boris. Oh, Sanchez. Right, good Sorry. work by both of you. Boris Johnson. Uh, I don't know. Boris Johnson. I don't know why I said that. BJ. He's in Great Britain. BJ. You too? Yeah. The tennis player? <laughs> He's going to throw me in the penalty box. Long week, Dan. A long month. Long year. Panthers. Stanley Cup final. Them's the breaks. I'm going to go to a different wheel. Oh, no. A wheel with a different set of issues. Oh, hold on. But we're going to spin both wheels at the same time. Wow. wow. This is. This wow. Is wow. A couple of wheels no, cutting it up. Do they have the technical capacity to do that? Do they have to land we're on gonna the try. same thing? Or do we're we gonna talk try. about two things we're gonna at once? No, we're going to see what it lands on. I don't know what's going to happen here. We've never spun two wheels at once. But on this one, okay. there's the University of Florida documentary that's coming out. UF Doc. There's the Barry Bonds documentary that's coming out. Uh huh. There's a Roy's Top Ten Wow. For the first time in a very long time, huh. there's Chris Cody's opinion that six-year-olds should not be allowed courtside. <laughs> and Zion and Porn Stars is also on this wheel as well. It's on both uh, wheels? It's, it's somehow it's on never both happened wheels. before. And also Jason Tatum also on the wheel. Jason Tatum uh, asking Damian Lillard, why not Boston? Why, That's what why, I'm saying. Why do you hate Boston? What's the matter? Why won't you come over here? And also a president uh, indicted for espionage. Hmm. Two wheels. This is very exciting. All right, let's see if Jimmy we... Jimmy Carter, We're going to spin them both at the same time. Well, let's no, see. we're going to start one. Go ahead, spin one, Roy. All right, now let me spin the other one. 
They're both spinning right now. And wow. and, and Billy, uh, Billy, where did... Oh, the other one's going? Wow. Turbo charge. Height right of technology right now. Where it landed, but okay, but we just didn't accept its answer. Uh, Billy, what did it land on right now? Marlins are back. <laughs> Dan, you didn't mention that one. Wow. You should know better than that. That is a big story locally. I mean. Is it? I feel like it is. I mean, they're playing good baseball. Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy broke up. Yeah. Oh, man, wow. Dan. Awesome. All anyone has on the Marlins right now is this arise is good, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's hitting 400. But let's talk about celebrities and dating because I, the milkshake ladies in the game. Uh, the Shaki- point of spinning the wheel. Sh- Shakira is, I don't know whether she's dating Lewis Hamilton or Jimmy Butler. Both are being rumored. Uh, but those aren't even the ones you guys are interested in. No, it's not. Uh, we're interested in Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy around these parts. And I will say, if you want some journalism, Shakira was at the last Heat game. Saw her walking back. No, she's been the at many. Locker room she's been afterward. at many. I'm just saying, just That's some journalism, journalism. On, on site. But ta- Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy. Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy. This was, uh, I want to say, a, a romance for the decades, Charlotte. This was um, a, 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 a flicker in the night as... Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy. Maddie Healy is the lead singer of a band called the 1975. Um, a British man who is an entire bit by himself. Charlotte? Yes, he is. He's a, the, yeah, he, Hunter Harris, who writes the newsletter, Hung Up, described him, his face was looking like a question mark. That's right. Which is the best way I could, and he's, he's said bad things about a lot of stuff, and fans were really upset about it, and Fans, there was a, a parody account that went viral that fans were unionizing. Taylor Swift fans were going to oh. unionize because they felt so slighted wow. by how much work they had been doing, making friendship bracelets for her concert. And then, right. and she was dating someone they didn't approve of. Yeah, they were really, really, really unhappy with this. And it does sort of feel like Taylor Swift's fans don't only have the pull to sort of, you know, change the entire system of capitalism with Ticketmaster, but also bully their favorite person out of being in a relationship. Because she seemed super happy based off all of the leaked (laughs) photos that we were seeing, and they're walking around together, and he's wearing hats with her album title on it, and going to all of her concerts, and they're saying I love you back and forth through TikTok messages without anybody actually knowing it. And you know, sports fans have got to be real pissed about this, because sports fans can't get their teams to do anything. The The Knicks won't sell all of that, and then Taylor Swift out, and her fans can get her to break up with someone. So I think sports fans need to get a little more juice. Swifties. Chris Cody, please help me because I saw that Amin didn't go to the penalty box. Thanks because it's Friday. He could do whatever he wants. Thanks because he's in charge around here that he can do whatever he wants. So he just went and sat out the cu- on the couch out there with Boris Sanchez. Can you send them both to the penalty box? Ooh, oh, wow. To the penalty box, please. Have Boris Sanchez and Amin. Uh, get to the penalty box, please. Uh, get them out of here. Amin's been a disaster. Evidently, his mixer was a giant hit, though. Hugely popular. And I don't think there's been a better or bigger development locally than Billy Cares About Hockey. Credentialed media member, went to the <laughs> went to a final game last night. I don't care about hockey. I report on hockey. Yep. Yeah. How much I, did you hate getting home at 1 a.m.? I didn't hate it. It was part of the job as a hockey journalist. It's a job, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Billy, how did it feel in overtime when that goal shook through your chest? It felt good for the fans who were there rooting for the team. For me, it felt like another day at the office. Yep. Christ almighty. <laughs> did you see whether Roy was thrilled because this Oxbox situation? You have to understand, under the best of circumstances, Roy is a solar system away from where the hockey action is. Those press boxes there are in a different universe. It's not close to the action. It smells atmospherically different because you're in the clouds. I, well, okay, so the way that the press box is at the FLA Live Arena is mm. it's already up there. You're like home away from home. It's, it's yeah. all the way at the top. Yeah, it's all the way at the top. Now, what happens was because so many people like myself are there to cover the event, they closed off like two, like the top, I don't know, 10 rows of the two sections directly next to it. So it's the same height. You're still at the exact same height as everyone else. You're just in the seats. So, I, and here's an unpopular take. I kind of like the auxiliary press box that's in the crowd because you kind of get a feel for the environment, which is not what you're getting in the press I'm box. I'm with you, Billy. I'm 100%. I had it at the World Baseball Classic. I was in the middle of band playing. Like, it was, it was great. Roy, did you like it better? 
Uh, yeah, it, it no, was really. No, he did not. He uh, also, I'm not here to snitch, but for Roy. he was. I, I'm, I'm reporting. I may have seen a fist bump after Kachuk's no! goal. Roy. Fist bump. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a hidden fist bump. Yes. Yes. In the press it was a big box? goal by Chucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how yeah. big the goal was. In so. the press box. In the press box, yeah. <laughs> well, in the press. We're, we going, to We're going to We're Vegas. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas, yo. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go.